Welcome to the Madison Podcast. Today is Wednesday, January 31st, 2023. Today we're going to go over college basketball, NBA, NHL, soccer, and then we'll do my latest NFL mock draft, the news and notes, and best bet. We'll start with college basketball. We have to, like, rapid fire, guys. Um, we will go over the results from yesterday and look at the two tonight. Um, South Carolina upsets number five, Tennessee, 63-59. Georgia Tech upsets number three, North Carolina, 74-73. Number nine, Marquette beats Philadelphia, 85-80. Number 14, Illinois beats Ohio State, 87-75. Number 25, TC beats number 15, Texas Tech, 85-78. Number 21, Dayton beats George Washington, 83-61. BC beats Syracuse, 80-75. Indiana beats Iowa, 74-68. See, Bonaventure beats VCU 67-62. Central Michigan beats Georgia, Illinois 84-77 in double overtime. Ohio beats Buffalo 91-70. Bowling Green beats Ball State 81-72. Akron beats Eastern Michigan 77-46. Miami of Ohio beats Kent State 71-67. Toledo beats Western Michigan 88-63. Um, number 23, Oklahoma beats Kansas State 73-53. Illinois State beats Murray State 61-59. Loyal Chicago beats St. Louis 77-62. Ole Miss beats Mississippi State 86-82. Best bet wins. Windowood beats Southeast Missouri 58-54. Number 8, Kansas beats Oklahoma State 83-54. Number 17, Utah State beats San Jose State 82-61. Clemson beats Louisville 70-64. NC State beats Miami 74-68. Michigan State beats Michigan 81-62. DePaul beats Seton Hall. I'm sorry, I read that wrong. Seen Hall beats the ball 72-39. Colorado State beats San Diego State 79-71. Wyoming beats Air Force 83-72. UNLV beats Fresno State 78-69. And Gonzaga beats the Loyola Environment 92-58. We're going to try to get through this pretty quickly. Um, 6 o'clock, Greensboro v. My line is Greensboro 10.6 total. 147 and 9.20. And it is... 16F and 147F, um, I like VMI getting the points. 630 Big Ten Network, Northwestern at number 2, Purdue. My line's Purdue, 8.1, total 148 and 320. It's it is 12 and a half and 142 and a half. Um, I like the over. Number 24, Alabama at Georgia on the SEC Network. My line is Bama, 0.3, total 157 and 9 tenths. And it's 6 and a half and 164 and a half. Um, that's a good one in terms of where I may go. And I like the under. Next up, um, Fox Sports 1, St. John Xavier. My line is St. John's point three total 47 and 17, 20. It's in Xavier's favor by one half total 155 and a half. I like the under. 7 o'clock, number 18, Baylor and UCF. My line is Baylor by 2, total 145 and 1920. It's ended is. Hmm. 3 and a half and 138 and a half. I'm over. Notre Dame, Virginia, ESPN 2. My line is Virginia 14.3, total 125 and 920. It's ended is. 12 and a half and 115 and a half. I like the over. Wake Pitt, ACC Network, my line is Pitt, one, a quarter, so 46 and four fifths. And it is one, a half, and 142 and a half. Um, I like the over. Cincy, West Virginia, my line is Cincy, point three, so 142 and 11 20 it's, and it is five and a half, and 144 and a half. I'll take West Virginia to cover. Um, Wichita State, Tulsa. Um, hmm. My line is Tulsa, four and three quarters. I do not have a total for this one, so I apologize for that. Um, one half and one fifty one half. I'm gonna lay the one half with uh, Tulsa Witch Toss. Not very good. Um USF ECU, my line is ECU by three quarters, and 
it is two and a half and one thirty nine and a half. I'll take the over, but I don't feel good about it. Next up is USC Upstate and Presbyterian. My line is Presbyterian two point three to one forty five and a half. And it is one half and one forty two and a half um over. Asheville Gardner Webb, my line is Asheville four fifths to one fifty and a fifth. And it is Gardner Webb by two and a half total one forty nine and a half. Um, I'm taking Asheville plus the point plus one twelve. Charleston Southern Radford, my line is Radford ten point seven total forty two and three fifths, and it is um hmm I do not see this game on the board. That's weird. Um, Army Colgate. My line is Colgate 15 and a half to 130 and a fifth. At 13 half and 129 and a half. Um, I'm going to lay to 13 and a half Colgate. Navy Lehigh. My line is Lehigh by 4 to 140 and 11 twentieths. And it is 4 and a half and 115 and a half. Or 140 and a half. Oh my god, is that close? Slightly Navy. Chicago State to Kane Mary line is to Kane eighteen and an eighth to one thirty seven and eleven twentieths and it's eleven and a half and one thirty two and a half. Um, I'm gonna lay the points with to Kane. American Lafayette, my line is Lafayette by three tenths to one fifty or one thirty five and three tenths. And it's one half and one twenty nine and a half. Um I like the over. LaSalle, Rhode Island. My line is Rhode Island 1.7, so 148 in the 20th, and it is 3.5 and, and 148.5. And Slightly in LaSalle. Richmond, Fordham. My line is Richmond by 2, so 142 and 3 quarters. And it's another one I can't find. Richmond two and a half total, one thirty seven half. I like the over. George Mason St. Joe's my St. Joe's two point seven total forty three and eleven twentieths and it is four and a half and one forty three and a half. Um, slightly in George Mason. Loyola Maryland Bucknell. My line is Bucknell six point two total. One thirty seven and a half. And it's seven and a half and one thirty four and a half. I like the over. ETSU Mercer. My line is Mercer two and three quarters, so on forty one and two fifths. And we have one half and one thirty seven and a half over. Is that it all? My line is Furman 3.9 to 147 and 19 twentieths. And it is 7F and 147F. I'm taking Citadel to cover. Chattanooga, Western Carolina. My line is Western 5.3 to 145 and 19 twentieths. And it is. Four and a half and one forty five and a half. Very close, but slightly in western. Lipscomb, North Florida. My line is Lipscomb point one point two to one fifty two and four fifths. And it is one half and one fifty seven half. Um, I like the under. Austin P. Jacksonville. My line is 
Jacksonville for fifth stolen 43 and 11 twentieths. And it's Austin P two and a half total one thirty nine and a half. Um I'm gonna take the over. Seven thirty Indiana State Belmont. My line is Indiana State five point four total one fifty seven eleven twentieths. It's nine and a half and one sixty two and a half. Um under. Wofford, Sanford, my last Sanford, 9.7, total and 4 fits, and it's 11.5 and 159.5. Um, oh, that's a hard one. I'm going to take a slightly in the Wofford. 8 o'clock, ESPN, Florida, number 10, Kentucky, mine's Kentucky, 6.4, total and 63.5. It's five and a half at one seventy one and a half. Ooh, that's a high total. I like the under. Rice Memphis. My line is Memphis eleven point seven, so on fifty two and four fits, and it's fourteen and a half and one fifty four and a half. I'm gonna take Rice to cover. Missouri State and Southern Illinois. My line is Southern two and three quarters, so on three eight and nineteen twentieths. And it's six and a half and one thirty five and a half. I'm going to take Missouri State to cover. UIC Evansville. My line is Evansville 8 and 3 quarters, 141 and 9 tenths. And it's 1 half and 141 half. I'll lay it with Evansville. Valpo Drake. My line is Drake 20 and 3 quarters, 143 and a 20th. And it's 20 and a half and 144 and a half. Slight under. Northern Iowa, Bradley, CBS Sports Network, but it's Bradley 4.5, 12.45. And 6.5 and 138.5, and and I like the over. Yule Monroe, Louisiana, my line is Louisiana 10.2, total 143.9 tenths. And it's 11.5 and 144.5. And and Slightly in Yule Monroe. Incarnate Word. And I'm Commerce. My line is Commerce four and three quarters, so on forty six and nine twentieths. It's four and a half and one thirty nine and a half. I like the over. Eight thirty Fox Sports on Providence number one. UConn. My line is UConn eight point seven, so on forty three and a twenty or a quarter. Twelve and a half, one thirty nine and a half. Um, I'm going to do Providence the cover. Big Ten Penn State Rutgers. I have Rutgers 5.4, so 138 and 13 twentieths. And it's 6.5 and, and 143.5. And I like the under. SEC Network, Arkansas, Missouri. My lens, Arkansas 1.3, total 149 and 3 fifths. And it's Missouri by 5.5, and and total 143.5. I'll take Arkansas plus the points and plus 184 outright. They're due. Southern Miss and Arkansas State. My line is Southern Miss 2.8, total in 50 and 11 20. It said it's Arkansas State by 4.5, total in 50 and a half. I'm taking Southern Miss plus the points and plus 172 outright. Nine o'clock, ESPN 2, Vandy, number 16, Auburn. My line is Auburn 15.1, total in 43 and 9 20. And it's 18.5 and 143 and a half. I'll take Vandy to cover. ESPNU UAB North Texas. My line's North Texas one a quarter, so on 39, 11, 20. It's at six and a half and one thirty two and a half. Over. Ten thirty Fox Sports one. Boise State number nineteen New Mexico minus New Mexico six point one total forty five and nine tenths. And it's eleven and a half and one fifty one and a half. Ooh, I really like Boise to cover here. That's a really high line. At ESPNU at 11 o'clock, Santa Clara, St. Mary's, St. Mary's, 6.3, 239, and 2 fits, and it's 13 half and 139 half. I'll take Santa Clara to cover the spread there. Okay, now I'll move on to the NBA. Um, it took a little longer than I wanted to. Um, we'll go over the results and look ahead to tonight's games. 
Um, Hawks over the Lakers, 138-122. Celtics over the Pacers, 129-134. Knicks over the Jazz, 118-103. Raptors over the Bulls, 118-107. Warriors over the Sixers, 119-107. Okay. Now, tonight. Pretty big window. 7 o'clock, Bulls, Hornets. My line is Bulls, 1 3 quarters, 1 2 26 and 3 20 and we have, let's see, Bulls to an up total, 217 and a half, um, over. That's a low total. Pistons, Cavs, my list, Cavs 21 and a quarter, so 229 and a fifth. And it's 12 and a half and 228 and a half. I'll lay it. Clippers, Wiz, my line is Clippers 11 and a quarter, so 234 and 920. It's 12 and 236 and a half. Um, under 730 King's Heat. My line is the Heat by half, 12 to 29, and it's 1 and 229 and a half. Oof. Gunpoint slight over. 8 o'clock Pelicans Rockets. My line is the Pelicans 2 and 3 quarters, 12 to 27 and 19 20, it's, and it's 2 and a half and 230 and a half. Under. Mavs T Wolves. My line is T Wolves 22 and a quarter, 12 to 28. And nine tenths. And it's fourteen and two twenty-four. I'm laying it with Minnesota. Magic Spurs. My line is the Magic seven and a quarter, so two twenty-eight and three fifths. And it's four and a half and two twenty-eight. I'm laying the four and a half with the Magic. Nuggets Thunder. My line is the Nuggets one three quarters, so two twenty-nine and four fifths. And it's Thunder one and a half till two twenty-nine. I have no idea what this line is going to be because SGA might not play. Jokic might not play. But for right now, I'll take Denver and the points and even money outright. No Jalen Williams is a big deal. 830. ABC. Suns. Nets. The return of Kevin Durant in Brooklyn. I expect massive boos. My line is Phoenix 5 and a quarter, so 229 and, th- and 3 quarters. And it's three and a half and two thirty two and a half. Um, I like the under. And last but not least, ten o'clock ESPN Bucks Blazers. The return of Dame Lillard in Portland. My line is the Bucks by thirteen to two thirty four and a half, and it's nine and a half two thirty six and a half. I'm gonna lay to nine and a half on the road with the Milwaukee Bucks. Okay, now move on to hockey. We will go over the results from yesterday. Look ahead to today's couple games right before the all-star break jackets over the blues one nil sharks over the kraken two nothing three games tonight seven o'clock you have the sends at the red wings um red wings minus 136 cents plus 105 over under six and a half overs minus 144 under plus 118 cents plus one half is minus 25 red wings minus one half is plus 184 I'm going to go Red Wings regulation plus 120. 7th or 18th, Kings Preds, a really good game. Kings minus 115, Preds minus 104, over under 6 and a half, over plus 114, under minus 140. Kings minus 1 half is plus 202, Preds plus 1 half is minus 250. I'm going to go back to the well with the Predators here at minus 104. And then 10 30, Sharks, Ducks. Ducks minus 184, Sharks plus 152, over under 6 and a half, over plus 110, under minus 134. Sharks plus 1 half is minus 162. Ducks minus one half is plus one thirty four. I like the over at plus one ten. Now we'll go over the soccer results from yesterday and look ahead to today's notable games. We'll start in the Premier League. Arsenal over Nottingham Forest two one. Fulham Everton nil nil draw. Luton over Brighton four nil. Crystal Palace over Sheffield United three two. And Newcastle over Austin Villa three one. Three games today two thirty. Have Man City and Burnley. Oh my God, Man City's on fire. Five straight wins. Or more than that, they probably have won more than five straight. Um, knowing them and the um, ability to just rip off wins. Um, so, I would guess Man City's like a minus 450, minus 500 favorite. 
Oh, minus 1050. Wow. Burnley's 23 to 1. The draw is 10 to 1. I'm going over 3.5 goals, minus 110. Also, 230 Tottenham Brentford. Tottenham minus 160. Brentford plus 80. Draw plus 340. Tottenham's better than Brentford. Um, doing the same pick. Over 3.5 goals, plus 124. And then 315 Liverpool, Chelsea. That's a big one. Um, Chelsea's probably a big dog. Yeah, they're plus 420. Liverpool's minus 180. Draw plus 360. Liverpool should win. Full disclosure. But I would not be shocked if this is close. I'm going over three and a half goals again at plus 118. The Asian Cup. Um, Uzbekistan over Thailand 2-1. Saudi Arabia, South Korea 1-1 one, one draw. And South Korea advances 4-2 on penalties. All right, coming up this morning, you have Bahrain and Japan. Japan's going to be a big favorite. You would think. Um, yes, minus 600. Bahrain is 12 to 1. The draw is 5 to 1. I'm going under 2.5 goals at plus 116. And then coming up at 11, Iran and Syria. Iran's been on fire. Then minus 370. Syria is 10 to 1. The draw is plus 380. Like over 2.5 goals at minus 106 to end the round of 16 for Asian Cup. Africa Cup of Nations, um, Mali over Burkina Faso, 2-1, and South Africa over Morocco, 2-0. Quarterfinals begin Friday. We'll do that on the Friday show. ELC, um, Coventry, Bristol City, 2-2 draw. And Leicester over Swansea, 3-1. And then today, 2-45, you have Sheffield Wednesday and Watford. Um... Sheffield Wednesday plus 170, Watford plus 165, the draws plus 220. Um, Watford's better than Sheffield. I'm going to take them at plus 165 as a slight favorite on the road. UEFA Women's Championship League on BK Hackett over Real Madrid 1 0, Chelsea over Paris FC 4 0, Bayern PSG 2 2 draw, Ajax over Roma 2 1. All right, it's today, 12.45, you have S.K. Braun and St. Poulton. Um, pull up these odds for you. Um, Braun is minus 390, Poulton plus 850, the draw is plus 450. Right by plus 430, I like over 3.5 goals at plus 112. Mayon and Salvia Pragu, it's locked right now, but if it unlocks, we'll get to it. Um. Three o'clock I track and Rosengard. Um Frankfurt's minus four sixty, Rosengard is eight the one that draws five the one. I'm going over three and a half goals at minus one oh two. Um Benficia and Barcelona. Barcelona minus three thousand. Benficia sixty five the one that draws thirteen the one. I'm going under three and a half goals at plus 106. As that ends group stage in that. The FBV Pokal, we have um, St. Pauli and Fortuna Dusseldorf, 2-2 two, two draw with Dusseldorf advances 4-3 on penalties. 245 today, you have Hertha and Kaiser Lorden. Um, Hertha Berlin, minus 105, Kaiser Lorden, Plus 260. The draws plus 260. I'm going to go with Hearth, though. I don't feel good about it at minus 105. Uh, so, at the time of this recording, uh, Cruz is old Tijuana 1 0, and Mazelton Leon 2 2 draws, and Liga MX. Um, we have two games tonight. Um, Pachuca and Atlas. I mean, tonight for the listeners when they listen to us. Um, Pachuca is minus 115. Atlas is plus 290. The draw is plus 250. I like Pachuca minus 115 at home. And at 10 o'clock, he's Unam and Nacoxa. Unam minus 150. Nacoxa 4 to 1. The draw is plus 480 or plus 280. My bad. 
I'm going to go under two and a half goals at minus 110. I'm just going to quickly check to see if other leagues have games. Yes, today we have La Liga, 1 o'clock, Barcelona, and Osasuna. Um, Barcelona, minus 330, Osasuna, 7 to 1, the draws plus 430. I like over three and a half goals at plus 158. At 3 o'clock on ESPN, Deportes, Atletico, and Rayo. Atletico, minus 320, Rayo, plus 550, the draws plus 340. I'm going to go over 2.5 goals at minus 112. Um... We have a Scottish Premiership results from today. Aberdeen, Dundee, 1-1 draw. Livingston, Ross County, 2-2 draw. I don't think we uh, touched on those on yesterday's podcast. So I apologize about that, guys. Oops. Um, so, yeah, we're set pretty much for soccer. Now I'm going to do my latest NFL mock draft. Um we did this two weeks ago. This is going to be my second mock draft. I'm going to do them once a week until it gets closed. So then I might do it twice a week. And then obviously draft week, I do it every day leading up to the draft. So without further ado, here we go for my second mock draft. Number one, Chicago Bears from the Carolina Panthers. Caleb Williams, USC. Um... The Bears' decision on what to do with the first overall pick will be um, among the biggest stories of the offseason. Either way, Williams will go first, whether it's the Bears or somebody else. He did not have his best season last year, but his playmaking ability is what makes him special. Two, the Washington Commanders. Jaden Daniels, quarterback LSU. For the second mock, the Commanders offered Daniels over Drake May. He was perhaps the most electric quarterback in the country with his speed and his flashy stats in what was a Heisman Trophy campaign. Three, the New England Patriots. Drake May, quarterback, North Carolina. This time, the Patriots make the pick they should make in taking a possible franchise quarterback in May. There are some people in the media that feel that May could go first over Williams due to his arm strength, size, and mobility. For the Arizona Cardinals, Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver, Ohio State. The Cardinals are doing cartwheels here, landing perhaps the best wideout prospect since Calvin Johnson. Harrison Jr. is a nightmare for defenses due to his size and athleticism. Number five, the Los Angeles Chargers. Brock Bowers, tight end, Georgia. With Jim Harbaugh now in the fold, he may want to go with offensive line, but Bowers, you would say, is too tempting, right? Um, He'd make the Chargers offense already. Um, That's good, even better. And is a much needed security blanket for Justin Herbert, considering how injury prone their skill positions are. Or skill position players, I should say. Um, six the New York Giants. Malik Neighbors, wide receiver for LSU. The Giants have not ruled out a quarterback here, but if it's not a quarterback, the move should be a playmaker or an offensive lineman. Neighbors is known for his ability to make big plays with a lot of yardage, and that is something the Giants could use offensively. Seven, the Tennessee Titans. Joe Wall, offensive tackle, Notre Dame. The Titans look like a team that's heading for a major rebuild with the team getting rid of Mike Vrabel, along with some players that are part of Vrabel's success. Um, Wall is super consistent, and, he, and Peter Skaronsky will be blocking for whoever is at quarterback for a while. Eight, the Atlanta Falcons. Dallas Turner, edge rush, Alabama. You would think the Falcons would want a veteran quarterback, so the move should be focused on defense. Turner has great speed and athleticism, and he could also stop the run. Nine, the Chicago Bears. Jared Verse, edge rush, Florida State. The Bears should consider wide receiver here to go with Fields or Caleb Williams, but they can also use someone opposite Montez Sweat on their pass rush. Verse is a a plug-and-play guy, super athletic, focused, and explosive. Ten, the New York Jets. Ole Fashanu, offensive tackle, Penn State. The Jets badly need protection for Aaron Rodgers as he returns from the Achilles injury. Fashanu here would say a lot about their faith in Mekhi Becton, but he is an upgrade over Becton. 11, the Minnesota Vikings. Leatu Latu, edge rusher, UCLA. 
The Vikings could be played for a quarterback if Kirk Cousins leaves. It's a free agent, but Latu makes sense here with their defense needing pass rushers. Latu's fast, but his attacking abilities make him stand out. So the Denver Broncos. Terry on Arnold, cornerback, Alabama. The Broncos may be another team that could be played for a quarterback, but their defense has several holes. Arnold is not known for discipline, but he has excellent ball production and is super athletic. 13, Las Vegas Raiders. J.J. McCarthy, quarterback, Michigan. No quarterback stock has risen from the fall until now more than McCarthy's. He really hasn't made many bad decisions, and he's become an accurate passer. And then he gets reunited in the same division with his coach. So they'd be against each other. That's pretty funny. Um, 14, the New Orleans Saints. Talise Fuaga, offensive tackle, Oregon State. The Saints are in an interesting position come the draft. Fuaga is a super strong player, and he's perfect um, on an offensive line for a team that can use more protection to help Derek Carr. 15, Indianapolis Colts. Romay Odunze, wide receiver, Washington. The Colts have more holes on the defensive side of the ball, but the team could also use a main receiver for Anthony Richardson. Odunze is someone with the speed and size and has ability to play through contact. That would be a steal of a pick, by the way. 16, the Seattle Seahawks. Byron Murphy, the second defensive tackle, Texas. The Seahawks' pass rush has been their biggest weakness for years now. Murphy is a fast riser in this draft, and he would come in and help the team stop the run. 17, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Keon Coleman, wide receiver, Florida State. The Jaguars have major needs in other areas, but they take the sexy pick here with Coleman. He provides elite size and frame, and he has the ability to make adjustments. 18, the Cincinnati Bengals. J.C. Latham, offensive tackle, Alabama. The Bengals need to protect Joe Burrow at all costs when he returns from injury, and Latham here makes sense. Latham is a versatile offensive lineman and is one of the stronger players in the draft. 19, the Los Angeles Rams. Cooper DeJuan, cornerback, Iowa. The Rams secondary was exposed throughout the season, so they go with DeJuan here. He's super athletic and has rare mass and frame destiny for a cornerback. 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Amarius Mims, offensive tackle, Georgia. The Steelers go with the Georgia offensive tackle for a second year in a row, and it's a unit, their offensive line, that needs some stability and youth. Um, Mims has a massive frame um, with length and excels in pass protection. 21, the Miami Dolphins. Um, Troy Fatano, interior offensive line, Washington. The Dolphins are a super top-heavy team with guys that are injury-prone. Fatano here makes a lot of sense with his versatility and with a lot of their current offensive linemen, whether they're injured or getting old. I think I skipped the Rams at 19. Uh, Cooper DeJuan, cornerback, Iowa. Um, the Rams secondary was a unit that was exposed throughout the year and in the playoffs against the Lions. Um. He's super athletic and has rare mass and frame. So in case we didn't do that, um, I apologize if we did do that one already. But I, for some reason, thought I skipped it. 22, the Philadelphia Eagles. Kamari Lassiter, cornerback, Georgia. The Eagles' defense was badly exposed in their late-season collapse, and their secondary in particular. Lassiter is someone that is not super flashy, but has the length to play well in coverage. 23, to Easton Tex in terms of the Cleveland Browns. Jerzon Newton, defensive line, Illinois. The Texans are doing backflips with C.J. Stroud, but they need more around him and the other side of the ball to get to the next level. Newton has good size and technique and has alignment versatility. 24, the Dallas Cowboys. Jordan Morgan, offensive tackle, Arizona. This pick would make sense for the Cowboys with Tyron Smith getting up there in age. It never hurts to go offensive line, and Morgan makes sense here with his versatility. He's well-balanced, and he's super physical in all aspects. 25, the Green Bay Packers. Kool-Aid McKinstry, cornerback, Alabama. With Jalen Alexander's future with the Packers in doubt, the team takes a corner. McKinstry has the length and physicality that teams like. Um, 26, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver, LSU. Assuming Baker Mayfield is back, this pick makes a lot of sense for the Bucks. With Mike Evans' future with the team in doubt, they would have a need at the position as Thomas has the length and elusiveness to succeed. 27, the Arizona Cardinals from the Houston Texans. Graham Barton, interior offensive line, Duke. Coming out of the first round with a wideout and an offensive lineman is a win for the Cards. Barton has good football IQ and good hand placement, but doesn't consistently dominate. 28, the Buffalo Bills. Tyler Guyton, offensive tackle, Oklahoma. The Bills are a team that doesn't have many names, but going with the line makes sense. Um, Guyton is someone that is work in progress, but he has great physical traits and is effective when asked to pull. 29, the Detroit Lions. Nate Wiggins, cornerback, Clemson. Wiggins dropping all the way down here would be a steal for the Lions, who are desperate for help in their secondary. Wiggins has excellent length and is very patient in pass coverage. 30, to Baltimore Ravens. Chris Braswell, edge, Alabama. The Ravens are another team that doesn't have the obvious need. Pass rush is necessary with some of their pass rushers getting older, and Braswell is someone who is aggressive and has good length. 31, the Kansas City Chiefs. Odone Mitchell, wide receiver, Texas. The Chiefs' need for good wide receivers is the most obvious need between the two teams left standing. Mitchell is someone that is super explosive with his speed and his ability to get down the field, but does not provide breakaway speed. And 32 to San Francisco 49ers, Kingsley Swamatia, offensive tackle BYU. The Niners are a team that is great in a lot of areas to the point where they don't have an obvious need. Swamatea has the footwork technique and has the length to be impactful. So there you have it for the mock draft. And now I'm going to do the news and notes for today. Um, so, um, Joel Embiid finally came back last night against the Warriors. Um, a ton of big upsets last night, as we talked about earlier in the show. How about this? The Orioles to be sold for $1.7 billion. That's the Angelos family moving on from the team after three decades of ownership. I wonder who's taking that franchise over. That is a big deal. And the Angeloses don't have good um, reputations. So um, we're going to see who uh, takes over there. Um, The Cubs are likely keeping Cody Bellinger as he's expected to return to the Cubs. So that's good news for them. How about this? Art Rooney took a shot at his quarterbacks. He didn't mince words about Pickett and Trubisky's play this season. Yikes. He says, I think the biggest thing we need is quality play at the quarterback position. Ooh. I mean, you could even argue Mason Rudolph in the uh, playoff game as well. Um, Eminem had a viral... Um, posts about the Lions as he uh, was excited about uh, Ben Johnson staying with the Lions after getting some looks at, at coaching jobs. And then Josh Reynolds' uh, quote on his drops, he goes, shit happens. That's right. And really... um. Interesting news here. Um, Tom Brady is replacing Greg Olson on Fox as he confirms he'll be Network's lead NFL game analyst in 2024. You knew this was going to happen. It was bound to happen. All they want is big stars everywhere. They want a rival Romo in Aikman. And Greg Olson did one hell of a job. He got better at the analyst position as... Um, the last couple seasons went on. He is arguably a better analyst than Tony Romo right now. And it's just unfortunate that he has to get demoted because somebody with a big name and a great reputation is going to come in and replace him, who everybody knows. And I really think that Greg Olson made a name for himself in broadcasting over the past couple of years. So... I feel bad for Greg Olson. Hopefully, he goes to Amazon or somewhere else because 
Kirk Herbstreet's a good analyst. I think he gets too much shit for uh, having that. Uh, he's a college guy analyst. Uh, he's a college analyst type of reputation. But I don't think that Kirk Herbstreet was terrible with um, Al Michaels. But Olsen with Al Michaels, I think, would be great on Amazon. And then Kirk Herbstreet could just um, um, do his college stuff and it calls some NFL games for ESPN and ABC on the B team if necessary, like he used to. Um, a Pro Bowl replacement has been announced, Colts quarterback Gardner Minshew. That's ridiculous. He cost them the freaking playoff game against uh, the, t- or the, the game for the AFC South against the Texans. And... He might have been a product of Shane Steichen, who I thought was a great coach this past year. It looks like um, their jerseys for the Super Bowl um, have been announced. The 49ers are wearing white and the Chiefs are wearing red. And the teams with the white jerseys have been hot the last couple Super Bowls. Um... So the Hawks fans were chanting something about uh, D'Angelo Russell because he's obviously in trade rumors with DeJounte Murray. And those Hawks fans don't like him, Russell. Terry Rogier shades the Hornets' DNA as he talks about the difference between losing in Miami and Charlotte. Um, Steelers hire... Former Falcons head coach Arthur Smith for offensive coordinator. I actually like this hire. He's better than Matt Canada. I think he's better suited as an offensive coordinator. And I think he'll do well there. We're good for Tomlin. Um, the NFL is investigating um, Kayshawn Booty, who was arrested last week on charges related to illegal underage gambling while at LSU. Yikes. And the... Texans are keeping both offensive coordinator Bobby Slowick and quarterback coach Gerard Johnson after they were interviewing for head coach and offensive coordinator positions, respectively. And Johnson got a nice raise. I'm sure Slowick did, too. So um, good for uh, C.J. Stroud and the Texans there. Um, Giants general manager Joe Shane evaluating draft quarterbacks as he's not ruling out picking a quarterback with six. He says, we're going to look at every position. Guess what? That's the right thing to say, especially when the quarterback, you didn't draft, but you, let's be honest, probably were forced to pay um, to not play up to that contract when he played this year. And he's always hurt. Um, so Caleb Downs talked about his choice to go to Ohio State. He was upset when Saban retired, and he wants to beat Michigan. Of course he wants to beat Michigan. Everybody does. Um, Florida State is targeting former ACC Commissioner John Swafford of costing member schools millions in lawsuit. Yikes. New NBA salary cap projection expected to be $141 million. Hmm. I don't even know what it is now, but that might hurt some teams. The NBA Rising Stars have been announced. A lot of big names in there. Um, Sophomores, Paula Banchero, Dyson Daniels, Jalen Duran, Jaden Ivey, Walker Kessler, Benedict Bethurin, Gigan Murray, Shannon Sharp, Jabari Smith Jr., Jalen Williams. Rookies. Bilal Kalabali, Keontae George, Jordan Hawkins, Scoot Henderson, Chet Holmgren, Hame Hawkes Jr., Derek Lively, Brandon Miller, Braden Pudzimski, Kaysen Wallace, Victor Webinyama. And in the G League, Aizan Almanasa, Matas Buzelis, Ron Holland, Mac McClung, Tyler Smith, Oscar Shibwe, and Alandez Williams. And Shibwe is a two way player. Um, Rangers shortstop Corey Seager had um, hernia surgery as he's hopeful he'll be ready for opening day. How about this? Um, 
Stephen Curry and Sabrina Ionescu will be challenging against one another during All-Star Saturday. That is awesome. Tennessee is under investigation as they are investigating them for NIL violations in multiple sports. That's not great for that school. Um, Vlad Guerrero Jr. gets the cover of the show. That is not surprising. And what was cool is that his father got it 18 years ago. A lot of teams are interested in Noah Syndergaard. Among them is the New York Yankees, who will be attending um, his bullpen session among 15 other teams. Or among 15 teams. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. I'm not a big Syndergaard fan. I just think that um, he was a disappointment with the Mets and really wasn't super impactful anywhere else he's been. All right, so there you have it for news and notes. Last but not least, my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, There's a college game that stood out to me. It's a team that's clearly better than the other, and they should be a road favorite instead they're a road underdog. I'm going to lay a quarter unit on it, and the game's in the Sun Belt, and it's Southern Miss. I'm going to take them plus the four and a half. I don't know why people like Arkansas State. So, I'm going to take lay a quarter unit Southern Miss plus four and a half at Arkansas State for my best bet of the day. That's it for the show. I'll be back tomorrow recapping everything. We'll look at the, everything tomorrow as well. And then we'll have golf to do as well. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.